Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to this Sunday evening worship service, October 4th, for Bay Springs Baptist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us online. I do want to mention a few things by way of announcement. Today is Harvest Day. We are hoping that you were able to join us in person or online. Uh, I'm sure that we'll be celebrating a good day, and we're looking forward to that. A couple things coming up that I want to mention to you. On Sunday, October the 11th, we have a deacon's meeting, 7 a.m., and then that afternoon, 3.30 p.m., we have church council. On Wednesday, October the 14th, will be our uh, monthly business meeting. That'll be at 7 p.m., and then on Tuesday, October the 20th, at 9.30 a.m., our happy helpers are going to Scarecrow in the Garden, and um, we're going to eat at Zach's after that tour. So come and join us. We'd love to have you. Uh, so glad that you've joined us tonight, and we welcome you to our service. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. God, thank you for our church and church family. God, thank you for the freedom that we enjoy to come out and worship. And God, we ask that you would... Uh, that you would just bless our worship tonight, that you would use the music and the message and every aspect of this worship service to bring honor and glory to the name of Christ. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, the Bible tells us that when we are in Christ, that we are a new creation, that Jesus comes in and he makes changes in our life he makes us new, and so we're going to sing about that. Um, since Jesus came into my heart, I hope you'll sing with us. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light, I have light in my soul For which long I had sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I have ceased from my wandering I have ceased from my wandering And going astray Since Jesus came into my heart And my sins and my sins which were many are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as onward I go. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart amen and we can we can have that great change in our life because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And so we just want to lift his name up. And so we're going to sing glory to his name. Join us as we sing. Down at the cross. 
Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. My heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. Glory to His name, glory to His name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name, come to this fountain, come to this fountain so rich and sweet, Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of Glory to His name. Thank you so much for singing with us tonight. Before him fall the key. 
King of kings, O oh, come adore our God who reigns forevermore, forevermore. All oh, hail, Redeemer, for He has died for me. shall not fail throughout eternity. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for He has died for me. His praise and glory shall not fail throughout Majesty, Lord of all, let every throne before him fall, the King of kings, O oh, come adore our God who reigns forevermore. King of kings, oh come on our God who reigns forevermore. Praise God who reigns forevermore. You're our God who reigns Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Doug. If you uh, have your Bibles with you this evening, I'm going to ask you to take those out. I hope you'll keep them open as we look at a, a passage of Scripture from the Gospel of Mark. We're in Mark chapter 3, and I want you to look at verses 28 and 29. You know, from time to time, uh, people will ask me questions, uh, biblical questions, theological questions, and... Um, we're going to deal with one of those tonight. We're going to look at what the Bible calls the unpardonable, the unforgivable sin. So if you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 3, I want you to look at verses 28 and 29. Listen to what the Bible says. Mark 3, 28, Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. So uh, if you've ever wondered or er ever been asked, is there such a thing as an unpardonable sin? I want us to look at that tonight, and I want you to be thinking about that as we look at this passage of Scripture. I want you to know that very clearly taught in Scripture that the Lord will forgive you of any and all sins that you commit in your life. Now, I hope that you will say amen to that. Boy, we would all be in a mess if, it was, if forgiveness was not possible. But Jesus said there is one sin that you will not be forgiven. If you reject the Holy Spirit's leading you to repent, turn to Jesus and be forgiven, then you have said no to Jesus, you have said no to the Spirit, you have said no to the only place that you can get forgiveness. And if you say no to the only place that you can get forgiveness, you will not be forgiven. It's called the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and your sins will not be forgiven. Okay? So, there are a couple things 
as we think about the unpardonable sin, the unforgivable sin, there are a couple of things that I want you to see in the scriptures. All right, we're going to break the, break this down into two parts. Number one, I don't want you to miss the promise of forgiveness. All right, now if you'll look in verse 28, I want you to see, I know I just read it, but I want you to see this again. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. This, this statement was made in the context, Jesus had been having a conversation with the scribes and the Pharisees, and if you look back earlier in Mark chapter 3, you will see where Jesus has cast out a demon from a demon-possessed man. He was casting out demons, and the scribes and Pharisees were saying that the reason that Jesus had the power to cast out demons was because Jesus himself was demon-possessed. And when they make that accusation... Jesus comes back at them in verse 25, and he says, If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. In other words, if Jesus' power had have come from demons, then why in the world would he be casting them out? Mark 3.28, to me, is one of the most amazing articulations of the gospel in the entire Bible. What Jesus just said is that all sins will be forgiven the children of man. Now, the word sins that Jesus used here uh, is a, a word in the Greek language, homertia. And, and my Greek is not much better than my English. It's a word that means every one of your sins. Every one of them. But it, Jesus adds to that word a prefix. And so very literally what Jesus said was that all of your sins lumped together as a whole, all at one time would be forgiven. Man, isn't that a great thought? Uh, to forgive means to utterly and completely remove something from someone's account. So when Jesus said that all of your sins could be forgiven, that meant every single one of your sins. They could be taken off your account and they would not ever be charged against you again. That is a great promise, ladies and gentlemen. Man, I hope you can get that promise tonight. I hope you can latch on to that reality that every one of your sins can be forgiven. Let me ask you, have, have you done this? Has there ever been a time in your life when you've recognized the fact that you're a sinner and, and you called on the name of Jesus and asked him to, to forgive you of your sins? Have you done that? Right now, I don't know if you're watching this on a, on a TV or a cell phone or a tablet, but if you haven't done that, I want you to just stop right now all right, there's no magical uh, sinner's prayer that you have to repeat. It has everything to do with your faith being placed in Jesus. If you have never called on the name of Jesus and just simply said, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. If you've never done that, I want to challenge you to do that right now. And if you do that right now, I sure would love to hear back from you that you've prayed and placed your faith and trust in Jesus and you've asked him to forgive you of your sins because the Bible says that you need to make that decision public. You need to tell the church, you need to tell people that Jesus is your Savior. So number one, don't miss the first point, the promise of forgiveness. Jesus has said that you can be forgiven, okay? Okay? But let's move on to point number two. Let's talk about the unpardonable sin. I want you to look there in verse 29. The Bible says, But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Now, right after Jesus has just talked about forgiveness, he gives us one of the strongest warnings found in the Scriptures. 
He says that there is one sin that if you commit this sin, God will not lump all of your sins together. He will not remove them away from you. And Jesus calls this sin the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Man, I've had people ask me about that as long as I've been in ministry. Well, preacher, uh, I hear about this blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Well, what exactly is that? Because I, I don't want to commit that sin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to look at that for just a minute. In, in order to understand what it means to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you have, you have to understand what exactly it is that the Holy Spirit does. Now, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will do three things in your life. Number one, he will convict you of your sin. That's right. In other words, he will prompt you. He will, he will let you know that you have sinned. Maybe through a song, maybe through a sermon, it may be through a friend, and they tell you about their uh, relationship with Jesus and how God has forgiven them of their sin. But somewhere along the way, the Holy Spirit will convict you of your sin. But it also says that the Holy Spirit will convict you of your need for righteousness. Okay? He, he's going to let you know that you've sinned, number one. But he's also going to push you to realize your need for a, a righteousness that only comes from God. Okay? And then number three, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you of the coming judgment. So he will convict you of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And then once he convicts you of those three things, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is going to take your heart and lead you to Jesus. So if you're wondering, well, preacher, what exactly is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Ladies and gentlemen, that is when the Holy Spirit convicts you and you say no. He will convict you of your sin and you say no. He will convict you of your need for righteousness and you say no. He will convict you of the reality that there is a coming judgment and you say no. When you say no to the Holy Spirit, you are saying no to Jesus. And you are saying no to forgiveness. And, and when you say no to Jesus, there is no forgiveness of your sins. You will still be in your sin. You will have no hope for eternal salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to me so carefully. Whatever you do, don't say no to Jesus. Don't say no to Jesus. I promise you that God has done all that he can do to make sure that you spend eternity with him in heaven. The only way, the only way for you to miss heaven is for you to miss Jesus. Don't say no to Jesus. That is the unpardonable sin. And I hope that uh, that helps you in your walk of faith. And my goodness, if up uh, until this point in your life you've said no to Jesus and you're still living, let me tell you what that means for you. That means there's still an opportunity for you to be saved. There is an opportunity for you to say yes to Jesus, for you to say yes to the Spirit and do what God has said do. Man, I hope this encourages you in your walk of faith. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what your word teaches us about heaven and hell and what it means to say yes to Jesus, but also what it means to say no to him. God, I pray for those who will hear this message. God, I pray for uh, those who may hear this message and may have said no to Jesus, no to the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that while there's still opportunity, they would reconsider, that they would decide, that they would trust, that by faith that they would say yes to Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who hear this message who are not saved, that they would be saved. 
And then, God, I also pray for those who've heard this message that are saved. Father, help us to do all that we can uh, to take the gospel to the world. Help us to introduce our, our family and our friends and our neighbors to Christ. Lord, we, we want to see people come to know you. And God, thank you for Jesus. God, thank you for salvation. And thank you for, for your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. If you've made any decisions, maybe uh, you've made a decision for salvation tonight, we would love to hear from you at Bay Springs. Please contact the church office or one of our deacons. Um, we would greatly appreciate hearing back from you. If you w would like more information about our church or, or joining our church, we would love to share that information with you. We would invite you to, to come back in person as you feel comfortable to do so. Uh, our church is, is slowly and surely coming back, and so uh, we invite you to do that. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening.